Hey, what's up guys? Tony Dubbed here and today I'm doing a video review for the Audio-Technica ATH AG1X and the ATH ADG1X. Now this is the open back and close back variant of Audio-Technica's new gaming headsets which are aimed for PC and also consoles. Now, before I get into everything, let's talk about price. It is around £280 on Amazon.co.uk and around $300 on Amazon USA for both variants. Now in this video I'm going to compare the closed back and open back versions and also compare it to my all time favourite and my daily drivers which are the um, Denon D2000 with custom D5000 and D7000 cable with a mod mic which is attached. If I bring in all the customizations and the initial cost of the headphones themselves, these uh, this headset, or should I say headphone, or audio file headphones with headset, comes to around the same price as uh, these headsets. So I was very much intrigued to see how these headsets would compare to an audio file grade headphone. So without further ado, let's go into the build quality, then I will uh, have a uh, sound quality and recording quality test as well, and talk about the differences between the two. So let's talk about the build quality. Now the closed back variant looks like this. It has a, a black and red theme with a glossy, as you can see me in the background, uh, kind of theme. Whilst the open back variant has, you can see obviously the open back uh, nature of it, so you can see the drivers, but it's got a silver and blue uh, theme. I like the fact that Audio Technica have differentiated the colors between the closed back and the open back variant. Now both headsets have the same sort of um, um, headband design. It's called a 3D wing design by Audio Technica. This means that you're going to get a really comfortable feel no matter the size of your head. Now in my experience um, these headphones are, are relatively heavy but in my experience from these um, sort of um, sort of mechanisms that you get all the weight taken off them and this was very much the case with these headsets um, the 3D wing system works flawlessly over here and better still it's not going to ruin your hairstyle well a majority of your hairstyle, <laughs> unlike some of your some of headbands. Now at the top you've got a kind of plastic design and all of this is made out of plastic which is slightly a shame but that said you don't want so much extra weight on top of your head so it's there's a reason why uh, Audio Technica have chosen this design. Now in terms of the headset it's got a non-removable cable. Now that is one of the biggest sort of um, complaints I've got in terms of the build quality of the headsets because they have a non-removable uh, cable which at this price point is kind of inexplicable. Um, you would want to remove cable simply because if you want to use it in different scenarios or you just want to uh, prolong the life of it because the uh, uh, cable strain over here is not the best in all honesty and over time it could come a bit loose so it's just something to bear in mind. Now in terms of the ear pads themselves, now they don't rotate or anything like that so they're not very portable given the size of the headset and you'll see them on my head in just a bit and you'll know why they're not portable but the the, the ear pads over here really co complement the uh, 3D wing design. Now what's in interesting to note over here is the different ear pads that I used between the two headsets. Now first of all I should mention that within the box you don't get any extra ear pads which again is slightly a shame. Um, some other uh, manufacturers provide um, interchangeable um, ear pads that you can have in the box such as velour pads or soft ear uh, leather pads. Now in this case you can see the closed back variant has a um, different type to the more velour looking um, open back variant. It's really interesting to see why the two um, headsets have a different design and you can even see in terms of the thickness of them the um, closed back variant is definitely a lot thicker. Now as far as comfort goes I actually prefer the open back variant. It's just a little bit, um, it sits a little bit um, off your head in other words it's not very, uh, the clamp isn't as strong and that's pretty much obvious because of the, uh, the size of the the ear pads but nevertheless um, I just both of them are comfortable and the, the fact that I wear glasses when I'm gaming I had no problem wearing either of these um, headsets finally I should note that you can see at the um, the the 3D wing design over here on the open back variant has got like an open design, whereas the closed back variant has a closed design. I'm not really sure why they've changed uh, the two different things because they're both padded in different areas. Uh, this is a little bit more comfortable over time versus this one, which is a little bit more open, uh, which means that if you've got some sort of slightly odd head shape at the top, this kind of um, plastic bit is going to be kind of 
indented in your head. Now in terms of the microphone, yet again, it's nice to see that the fact they've got a um, sort of, um, not a removable, but a um, retractable uh, microphone. But again, it's a shame that we haven't seen a removable microphone because I would have quite liked to remove them when I'm not actually using them for gaming because this sort of design doesn't really, um, it's not really amazing because you can, if you're wearing them, you'll be able to see the microphone on the uh, left hand side, of the corner of your left hand side of your eye. Now, I would just would have liked it to be removable and more so uh, maybe just a little bit longer so it can stretch around certain uh, different head shapes. But the cable itself is uh, fantastic. It's uh, malleable, as you, as you can see. It's got memory, fo uh, memory wire there uh, in order to adjust it to your certain way or certain way you're going to talk. Now, there is foam bits uh, included, which is great. Um, nothing too special at this price range, but nevertheless, it's good to see them included. Now, within the box, you will also see that you've got a um, two meter extension cable. Now, this is looks really cheap if you ask me. It looks like something that's come out of China that costs about one pound or less than one pound uh, to get to get. But you can see that there is terminated by a microphone and a uh, 3.5 millimeter jack. Now, this is great if you've got a sound card, especially given the fact that the, the level of the headsets are coming out. I would expect most people to have a sound card for these. But you should just bear in mind that if you do not have a sound card, you're not going to be getting the most of this headset. Uh, simply because, um, say, your motherboard won't be driving good uh, audio uh, through to a 3.5mm jack. And therefore, or it won't be having a good recording quality. And therefore, you would need an external sound card or internal sound card to really benefit from this. And I'll get into that in just a bit when I talk about the sound quality and recording quality. But you can see this this cable is a little bit cheap but it's good the fact that Audio Technica include a long 2 meter extension cable. Now the inbuilt cable has a, a mic mute switch button uh, which I'll show and demonstrate in my recording test. And it's also got a headphone volume uh, um, little um, wheel. Now the little wheel over here is quite flimsy if you ask me and again it just doesn't really ooze uh, quality that you'd expect from a near 300 pound headset. The cable is terminated by a 3.5mm jack and it's very nice, um, well built and therefore can last for a long time. Now, the beauty of this is that you can plug this into your regular smartphone so for example here in the OnePlus uh, 5T I can plug it into here and listen to music on there without having to worry about a long 2 meter extension cable. Now this cable over here is around 1.2 meters so it's about normal for all different uh, headphones or earphones. So overall the build quality and design is good but it could be improved such as as I said the microphone, the removal cable, um, the, the extension cable that's included, I just would have liked a little bit of extra quality here and there. Now let's talk about the recording and music quality. And we're back now guys, so now everything you can hear is coming directly uh, from the headset. Now I should stress that in terms of recording quality, both the close back and the open back variant, which I'm wearing right now, have the exact same recording quality. And I must say it's among the very best um, audio recordings that I've had from a headset, let alone a um, little microphone or a USB mic of, of, of whatnot. It is fantastic. Now the recording quality, as you can probably hear and make out, there's a really nice clean uh, recording uh, in, in the mid-range. It's not overly boomy and therefore it could um, it could be a little bit better in, in terms of the um, the mid bass tones but in terms of the uh, the mid range and the treble it's fantastic. I can't stress that enough. Audio Technica have done a fantastic job with the um, recording quality. Just to give you a bit of a reference I'm just going to go on the uh, Mod Mic 4.0 and now everything you can hear right now is coming from the Mod Mic 4.0, which you could probably hear a little bit of a difference between the two mics. Um, the Mod Mic is a little bit more boomy, but a little less clear in the uh, mid-range. And in all honesty, if you're going to be talking a lot, you'd want something that has a nice mid-range or best a good treble. And the Audio Technica headset has that really well. And now almost as importantly let's talk about the sound quality. Now first off the um, open back variant. Now given the fact that it's an open back headphone it's no um, it, no surprise that you can get a nice wide sound stage and a very clear revealing sound which is fantastic when it comes to games or if you're going to come to music listing you get fantastic instrument separation and, and, and a great sort of uh, space of awareness. It's not to say the closed back variant isn't good in that respect, but versus the open back variant or versus open back headphones, just generally speaking, um, the, this Audio Technica headphone sounds fantastic. Now, moving on to the um, the individual frequencies, let's talk about the bass first. Now, sub bass extension on the um, open back variant is a little bit lacking. Um, it, it doesn't really extend, and it's pretty much the same sort of um, problem that I heard with the closed back variant. The sub bass just doesn't extend, and versus my 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 go to um, headphones, um, I found that the 
the sub bass just could do with a little bit more rumble. In terms of the mid bass, it's quite interesting. There was a little bit of difference between the two headphones. Um, the open back variant had a slightly cleaner um, uh, mid bass response, a uh, mid bass slam. However, it lacked um, uh, that sort of presence and a bit of control. Whereas the closed back variant had a little bit more control and a little bit more presence in the mid bass, as you'd expect from more of a closed back headphone. Moving on to the mids, here is where the open back uh, variant really shined. Yeah, the mids uh, came out really well and were really um, detailed. But still, both headsets, both the closed and open back uh, headset, had sort of a more artificial mid sound. And again, comparing to audiophile grade headphones, you could hear the difference. There's a slight little difference and when you put them on, you feel that something is just not quite right in the mid range, especially the upper mid section. Now, versus the open back and closed back, the, uh, the, the open back variant sounded a lot more revealing and was a lot more forward, whereas the, um, the closed back variants, due to its nature and due to the mid bass presence, had a more recessed and, um, and pushed back uh, mid range. Both in terms of the highs, in terms of the extension, they both had fantastic revealing highs. In terms of sibilance, I would say that the open back uh, variant had a slightly more sibilant uh, sound and therefore can be a little bit a little bit harsh on certain certain songs or certain games, whereas um, the, uh, the closed back variant has a little bit smoother but yet fantastic extension, but a little smoother um, uh, extension at the top end. So in terms of, the, uh, in terms of both, I would say the open back was a little bit more um, capable in the highs, uh, but yet it was a little better to listen to with the closed back uh, variant. Finally, moving on to the soundstage. Now, as I said before, the open back variant has a nice wide and open soundstage, and it's the same uh, with the uh, closed back variant. The instrument separation is great, tonality is really good. However, you can hear the difference between open back and closed back variants here because the soundstage on the open back variant is just a lot better. Um, sound is a little bit more revealing, positional cues are just that little bit better, and it comes to um, having that space to breathe. Uh, the open back variant just has a lot more space and therefore is able to have a much better rounded sort of soundstage. So if you're looking for something with a better soundstage, the open back variant definitely wins. Um, I should note that something that I did notice when I put on these headsets versus my actual headphones is the actual speed of them. Now a lot of people talk about speed when it comes to headphones or earphones and not many people understand. It's just the way that the, the, the music is delivered, how, how quickly the music can be delivered. Um, as the name would suggest, speed. Now, um, in this respect, both headsets has kind of like a slower speed, so almost like that as I was talking, versus my uh, headphones, which were a lot faster sounding. Now, th this, there can be a pro and a con to this. There's, n there's no sort of uh, disadvantages in terms of uh, how the audio is processed or how the audio head, um, um, is delivered by the drivers then to your ears. It's just that the sound sounds a little bit slower paced versus the more fast paced um, um headphones that I have, the Denon headphones that I have down there. Now, moving on to the overall sound quality, how do I think of them and wh what do I think about the, both of them? Now, if you gave me around well, 280 odd pounds or 300 dollars, I'll definitely choose the open back variant over the closed back variant. The only disadvantage, the real, the real disadvantage the, the open back variant has is the less revealing mid bass uh, response and the fact they've got open back nature. And so therefore, if you have sort of sounds coming from left and right, you're going to hear them really well, whereas these are going to isolate a lot better. So if you're in a noisy environment, then maybe the closed back variant, just generally closed back headphones will be more accustomed, will, will be better suited to you versus an open back headphone. But overall, in terms of sound quality, I must say these are definitely the best headsets I've ever heard. Now, it doesn't sound like it, given the fact that I've just been comparing it to audiophile grade headphones, but not many headphones, including audiophile grade headphones, can really compete with these headphones. They're regarded as one of the best uh, buys in, or in the audiophile um, uh, headphone community, and when you attach a microphone to it, it becomes hands down the best headset you're ever going to buy for around under £300 or customized for under 300 pounds but if you're not if you can't find these and obviously you can't modify them and whatnot then when it comes to headsets as an overall um, overall thing nothing beats these audio technica headphones these are by far hands down the best headsets i've ever come across 
but they're not exactly perfect. They're great. I mean, I would give them 8 out of 10 if I had to give them a, a sort of mark. I wouldn't give them a full 10 out of 10. Even though they're the best sounding headset, they're one, expensive, two, don't have a removable microphone or a removable a cable, and come with a really shoddy £1-esque Chinese uh, cable that connects up to your PC, and there's no USB, um, a USB DAC or anything like that that's included, and more so there's no a a additional accessories such as like... Uh, a additional pads that you can change or a sort of casing that you can add them uh, you can put them into or uh, or something like that so they're not flawless but they're among the best headsets you can buy if you're looking for something like this definitely uh, check in the link in the description below so you can see my um, my Amazon link and you can purchase the headset if you so wish but as I said if you've got the money then definitely get these if you are more hands-on like like me and I, I experimented with my Denon headphones then of course an audio vial grade headphone like this or, or or something similar where you can get a additional 40 pound or 45 pound microphone and attach it to it would be a better solution overall but that does involve several different things rather than an all-in-one solution so there we go guys I've been totally dubbed hopefully you've enjoyed this review make sure you give it a like comment subscribe let me know in the comments below what you think the best headset is for under 300 pounds I'll be definitely interested in your Alright guys, I've been totally dubbed. Take care and bye-bye.